uh, Adam Bona is a security analyst. He's just joined me uh, on Zoom. Adam Bona, it's good to have you on Election 360. Uh, to start off with, so how do we deal with these hotspot areas? Well, yes, uh, good morning. We deal with the hotspot areas by ensuring that we can preempt what will happen through, uh, you know, collecting data and ensuring that we have all our history, you know, uh, boxes checked. And so, and putting in measures, you know, ensuring that we have adequate data to support what, uh, you know, resource should go to a particular hotspot. And in fact, uh, even the identification of a hotspot, uh, it's something that uh, would need a bit of uh, thinking, a bit of science to be able to, uh, you know, come to a certain realization that this area is a possible hotspot. And what about the deployment of early warning response groups? Well, the deployment would have to be targeted. Myself and my team, we have uh, taught all the 16 regions. And in, in most of these areas, we visited, uh, you know, had, what do you call them, hotspots. And so we are working uh, with about, so far we have about 75 flashpoints, or you want to call them hotspots. And uh, there are different variables that were used in arriving at what would make an area a flashpoint or a hotspot. So about 75 of them. We are, we are done with about 50 something of them. And so hopefully in the very sh you know, shortest possible time, we should be able to be done with uh, what, the, the, what we have done. And then hopefully once we agree, uh, with the team, we will put it forward. Uh, we'll put it out. Hopefully, your media house can uh, also interrogate, can put this out. But then I think uh, before today, I mean, this morning's uh, program, your producer sent me some areas. So what I've done is to tease out. Uh, and in fact, the areas you your producer sent me are part of the, the list of 75 uh, dangerous points we picked when we went around the country. And so, yes, uh, to answer you. Um, Martin and I this morning were taking a look at some of the hotspots areas that have been identified ahead of the 2024 elections. And one of these areas is uh, the Odududu constituency. Let's take a look at Odududu, for instance. Why is this place a hotspot? Okay, so for Odududu, Odududu, was won by uh, the NDC in the last elections. And the difference is about 6,555. 6, it is a hot spot because if you have sent a document, let me probably, if you would indulge me, uh, it says uh, this uh, refers to specific areas and regions where uh, that is prone to violence, tension, controversies during elections. Several factors can be attributed. So we have, you know, political polarization, history of violence, ethnic and religious tension, disputed boundaries, high stakes, and then weak electoral administration. Then we have rhetoric such as whether you win or whether if we lose, we'll still not hand over to you. So those were some factors we highlighted uh, that's probably so. I'll now zoom in to Ododio. Uh, it's one of the areas your uh, Adote. Right, so we've actually uh, put your, your research on the screen right now, uh, and we are focusing on Ododio, do, do, which is your number six. Uh, you number talked six, about the right. NDC NPP voter difference uh, in, I think, yeah. the 2020 elections, uh, a vote difference right. of a little over 6,000. You talk about incidents of intimidation and harassment, ballot staffing and voter suppression, as well as a lack of trust in the electoral process. And you're saying much of these things have not changed? It hasn't changed. No, it hasn't changed. And so, Ododio is an area that we should be watching going into these elections. And I believe that once we, they, we, we are done with, uh, you know, what we have picked, and we put it out, hopefully 
uh, a lot the, the people themselves would be educated about what they should be expecting and they will be alerted. The essence of this is to ensure that uh, don't just vote and say you are going home and then you only hear in the news that there was some form of confrontation. I think that uh, the more there are people who are calm and watching what is going on, the more you would have those who might want to foment trouble, uh, knowing that there are people who would stay away from fomenting trouble. But when you go to an area and the area is quiet, and uh, you know someone feels that this uh, polling center is not going to favor me, you they would foment trouble, and by the time the town the town folks or the voters come out, they will be gone. They will do what they have to do, and they are gone. And so you can see with Odododio deal specifically uh, was one of the highlights of 2020 elections, and we have highlighted it: intimidation, harassment, ballot stuffing, voter suppression, lack of trust in the electoral process. I think that the electoral commission would have to do more in ensuring that this doesn't happen. The political parties, and when you go up to the research we've given you, so you can see, although you would give it a, a three, two star. You will give it a two star, and that is, if in the military circles, you want to say a brigadier general. And so that is the level of, well, no, that is, so that is less than two star, because then we gave one to 1,000 difference as a, a five star, one to 2,000 as four star, then we have two to 3,000, three star, then uh, what do you call it? three to 4,000. So the more the margin, the less, what do you call it, the tension. Mm. But Odododio deal is a different ball game altogether. You can see NDC won with a good margin of about 6,559. But yet there was a lot of tension in Odododio deal because uh, when you go into some of the things we are yet to, to add, there were issues of the incumbent party attempting to do ballot stuffing, and a lot of things happened. And so these are some of the things we picked up. Let me take you uh, away from yeah. Ododio Dio Dio to Ewutu Senya East, which is also uh, projected to be a hotspot ahead of the 2024 elections, which is just about some 15 days away. Uh, this is an area where we have two strong females. Uh, we've got the incumbent, Hawakum Sen, who is battling against another woman. Why should we be watching this particular area? We should be watching this particular area because you know that they, I mean, just like we said, the history of violence, if you go to the thematic areas that helped us to arrive as this, uh, uh, what to constitute, a, you know, uh, what do you call that, uh, a flash or a hot spot. When you take a Wutu Senya East, that place is one area that you will take all the boxes. You will take all the boxes when you come up to the second slide. Political polarization, history of violence, ethnic religious violence, because of the cosmopolitan nature of the area. You have disputed boundaries because when you are in Kaswa, you don't actually even know if you are in the West Central region or you are in Greater Accra region. Then you have high stakes. I mean, a, there's a lot because then you have people in Greater Accra uh, crisscrossing, Central crisscrossing. Then you have rhetorics. We have had rhetorics of, uh, you know, the, either the incumbent or the opponent there saying things that are, you know, are things that we shouldn't be celebrating about. Then you have security concerns. I'm sure today, if you are looking for one of the prime prone areas in this country, you will not uh, forget about Kaswa. Either Kaswa will be leading the chat or Kaswa will come among the first five, uh, you know, areas that are, you know, that have serious security concerns. So when you come down to, let me now zoom into uh, the, the area itself. There was a, a difference of 5,553. And this difference, that is in December 7th elections, tension were high, allegations of fraud and voter intimidation by the MPP. This was actually captured. We had MPP supporters were accused of intimidating NDC, NDC voters and preventing them from casting their ballots. So this is this is not this is 
information we went out there pick and then picked in picking from other sources mm. and uh when you go up you can see where to where to get this information we have added to our research right then you come to june 15th voter registration process was marred by allegations of fraudulent voter registration deletion of names from the voter register yeah. and the mpp Dr. Dr. Bona. was accused of registering non-resident voters and deleting names of suspected ndc supporters Dr. so Bona. when you come on you as you go on yeah go ahead so, so sorry for cutting in and my question actually um touches on the last point you were making about as far back as june which is not even an election month we started recording concerns about electoral um misunderstandings that could you know, end up becoming a violent situation. So what is it that we are not getting right, that we saw this coming, waited, and even up until the day of election, that was when we were recording the real acts of violence, where gunshots were told, were fired months ahead of December 7. Whose Correct. responsibility is it? Is it just the Electoral Commission, the parties, the NCC? Who is supposed to handle the concerns of you know, educating the people ahead of elections so we do not wait until December around this time where we start talking about flashpoints and places to watch out for. I'm sure when we finally put everything out, some of these things will come about. But for, for the purposes of this conversation, I would say that 2020 elections was a catastrophic failure on the part of the number one person in charge of security. The IGP then did no engagement. If you can go back and check, there were no engagements at all. There was zero, none. You mean James so, Opongwenu? Yes, James Opongwenu, there was zero engagement, like we are seeing today. Today you can see there's preemptive, what do you call it, uh, engagement, ensuring that uh, those, the powers that be, you the media, those of you senior journalists who pay, have a lot of following, have been brought together by the number one in charge of election security, the current IGP, to let you know the modus operandi, this is the way, the way they are going to go. But that did not happen in the 2020, prior to the 2020 elections. Mm. So we were left on our own, even though some of us picked Intel, some of us might have done similar things we are doing now, and preempted that there was going to be violence. At the end of the day, some of us can only talk and try to engage them. But if you engage and you advise, you don't have the power and authority mm. to tell them what to do. And so that is what culminated into the violence we saw prior to the 2020 election and during the 2020 elections, and even after the 2020 elections. So Kaswam or the Ewutu Senior East area is an area that you cannot do away with. You can't just sign it off. It is going to be an area that I have uh, you know, advise that the police SWAT team, the police has a SWAT team right. that uh, I'm sure they are likely to put for this SWAT team mm. to be there just as a form of deterrence. Right. When people, when you move in, you are going to be cracked, there will be a crackdown. People oh. will probably not take the laws into their own hands. I think this election, mm. I suspect we might not see too much violence, if you right. ask me, because of the level of engagement that is ongoing, especially by the security uh, couples led by the IGP. I suspect we might not see uh, okay. high incidents of uh, violence as we saw in, in 2020. the 2020 elections. All right, Adam, but I, no I'm afraid we've got to leave it here. Thank you very much for your time. We do appreciate your time with us here on Election 360.